Things very rarely go to plan in life, especially in YouTube. I have made or gone to make so many videos this year alone, and um, this season alone rather, um, that have just gone completely wrong. I haven't been able to upload them. One of which has been today, sadly, um, but we get onto that a little bit later on. Um, there's been quite a few that I've known that we're gonna get canceled a day or two or even a little bit longer before starting them, so I've not even got my camera out to film. But there have been some that have gone horribly wrong um, as soon as I've started filming and so I do have like a little bit of content from those videos. I made a video like this before previously where I uploaded um, a few clips from different videos I just couldn't upload for various reasons and today we have three more from more recent times. Firstly is a video that I tried to create during the World Cup. It was all in Lake Tolbert. Um, I was supposed to, well I was filming my asking Scottish fans about the England World Cup chances. I did film that and I was going to Auckland Lake Tolbert that day. Um, they tweeted that the game was on, but eventually the referee got there. So I've had a bit of an ingenious idea. I'm going to a game tonight in Scotland. So instead of traipsing around Hamden for even longer, um, trying to chat to people, um, I'm just gonna ask people at the game. So I'm gonna ask the same questions to Scottish football fans at Auckland Lake Tolbert. It couldn't get more rowdy and more Scottish than that. So um, same questions, different area, different people, same video. Do remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new though. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in Tolbert in just a second. This is the away end where the Hearts and the Hamilton fans were for the games that I was at last season. And um, look, they've had fair play to Tolbert and their fans. I think they've had a few volunteers down helping with the pitch today. They've got the frost covers on. Very, very well prepared here at Tolbert, making sure the game is on in these icy cold conditions. It is minus degrees today, which my hands aren't happy about. But yeah, the frost covers are on and the game is on. And I cannot wait. So yeah, the game wasn't on as hard as Tolbert and all the volunteers tried to actually get the game on. Um, the referee came along, saw the state of the pitch. I think it was like minus four or minus five that night. So I can't blame him for wanting to have it off. Um, but I think the middle of the pitch was like completely frozen. So probably wasn't safe, which is fair play. So today I've actually got my iPhone um, just right next to the GoPro here. So I hope you can see me a bit better rather than just having the car light on like I usually do. Um, but yeah, the next one I was, this was a very recent one. I tried to go to Edmondson house so after all the chat and after all the building work that I've seen going on there over the last couple of years I thought it's open now I can finally check it out I didn't know I tried to research online I tried to see if the museum was open already um, at least I thought maybe the cafe would be open maybe I'd be able to get a vlog out of it um, but as you'll be able to see from um, some of the footage um, although it is open it isn't fully ready just yet not completed 100% anyway but yeah I'll have to come back when it is just check these clips out it is quite amazing really that my journey in Scottish football started with that no well, actually I guess started with the Hamilton and Motherwell running video but it took like three months to be able to get out of the house and just come a few extra miles I don't know if you remember those times where you couldn't even go outside your radius for a while but yeah the amount of videos that I've now done here at Ibrox and I've seen Edmondson House from um, those early days with the icons of Ibrox to it being a building site during the um, title celebrations and numerous other games to it sort of growing up and up and up every time I'd come there were times where I'd come to Ibrox for games maybe two in a week a few in a month there's been times where I've been away down in England or in Europe where I haven't been able to come at all but every time I come Edmondson House keeps getting built up and up and up and now it is over there and I think it's open I've tried to look online I don't know if like there's a museum in there like all the time that you can visit or whether there is um, like a cafe in there that is open like 24 7 I really don't know how it's gonna come together but I'm really excited to see the finished product anyway which is where the majority of the rest of the stock is, cool. as well as the castle oh, and nice. the cafe. Okay, cool. Is there a museum coming? There is, but it's not open now. Ah, um, okay, cool. It'll be open around about the summertime. Happy days. Um, okay, nice one. In there, it's a fan zone. Yep. I get what's open when I, when I match day. Yep, yep. And whenever there's a concert or whatever on.
Right, so as you can see, Rangers um, shortbreads are in here, as well as like, other things over in the cafe too, but we have ourselves a coffee, of course. And look, it looks like that is where maybe the museum will be housed eventually. Doesn't seem like it is, um, it's gonna be ready till the summer, apparently. So yeah, I think it actually looks pretty cool. It does remind me in there of Liverpool's sort of new club shop that they've got over the road, sort of just next to Anfield rather than when it was inside it back in the day. Um, it's got like a cafe in that club shop as well. So it actually was like really cool. I thought um, I thought it's nice and it does sort of feel like something a big club like Rangers should have. I really do look forward to when the museum's going to be made. So I'm going to have to go back and do an actual proper full vlog about that soon. I've mentioned Edmondson House many times right in the early days of my channel i saw the old building there i've seen it as a building site for so long i've now been in it and seen it on this video as i can't up upload video eventually we're going to complete this loop and actually get in the finished product which i can't wait for now on to today's video that i was supposed to be filming i literally got an email um just well i just checked my emails it's from a few hours ago i maybe should have checked my emails before i came out but i did see um i was gonna hopefully as you'd have maybe seen as you will see actually um when i show you the intro for this video i was really really excited to see Queen's Park versus A United um, there's a lot of media there and the BBC are there today so I think there's a few restrictions on what I was gonna be able to be there doing and filming and stuff but just check out what I'd already filmed and then I'll tell you um, what I was hoping to get out of that video tonight we are going to be watching the biggest game you could possibly watch outside of the Premiership within Scotland it's the top two of the championship who go head-to-head -to -head tonight it is Queen's Park who are currently top at home, sort of, at Stenhouse Muir, whilst their new stadium is actually being built, against Air United, who are second. It would be huge if either of these two go up, but as you can see from the league table, Queen's Park on 40 points, Air United on 39, Dundee United snapping at their heels on 38, and with a game in hand. Queen's Park are absolutely massive for a number of reasons. Just check out their league history, which is on screen right now. As you can see, they were actually last in the top tier in around the mid 1950s. But before that, before World War II, they were a top tier team for their entirety. Basically, they didn't join the leagues when everyone else did. They left it a little bit later to join them but they are the behemoths of old Scottish football. They were, in the 1800s, arguably the biggest team in the world. When international tournaments weren't a thing, you obviously had to win the cups. And even when league football wasn't really much of a thing, you had to win the cup in your country. And Queen's Park won it 10 times between 1874 and 1893. They even got to two FA Cup finals within England as well. So they are absolutely massive. They are so well decorated in the Scottish Cup that they are the third highest team for Scottish Cups won behind Celtic and Rangers. They haven't won one since 1893, yet no other team has got more than them except from Celtic or Rangers. Yeah, so it'd be amazing for Queen's Park to go up just because of like the history of the club and them becoming professional now. They have only been professional for a couple of years paying their players. Before that, they were amateur for their entirety. Um, to play for the sake of playing is the club's motto. You should have a little look into the history of Queen's Park. But uh, United, it'd be amazing if they go up as well because they spent 34 seasons in top, Scotland's top division in total, but they haven't played in it since the late 1970s. They played in the second and third tiers of Scottish football since the 77-78 season. So it's been a long time for Air United fans since they've seen their team in the top tier, and it's been even longer for Queen's Park. They've both won numerous lower league titles, but they've never won the top tier. These are two big clubs, two well-supported clubs with amazing history as well. So whoever goes up out of these two, it would be sensational. Obviously Dundee are close, but I think all the football purists out there will be rooting for either Queen's Park or Air United. Let's get down to Stenhouse Muir to watch this amazing football match. Had this video been filmed, Last season, we'd be watching this game at Partick Thistle. Had this video been uh, filmed a couple of years ago, or anywhere from a couple of years to 
like a few hundred years ago we'd be watching it at Hampden Park but today it's Stenhouse Muir this is now where Queen's Park are playing their games for the season at League 2 Stenhouse Muir so the winners of the championship could end up winning it here at League 2 Stenny obviously it's been a while since they've been building Lesser Hampden which I still think is kind of under construction and there are even question marks over whether Lesser Hampden would be premiership ready I know there's a few um, criteria that premiership grounds need and I'm not sure Lesser Hampden will have that but hopefully we can find out today yeah we've interviewed some big names on the channel this year from Shamal George at Livingston to Cy Ferry and Slaney at Open Gold Broom Hill to like, Dick Campbell last season at Arbroath and uh, Fraser Murray at Kilmarnock they're just a few that come to mind just now um, but we spoke to loads of cool footballers managers secretaries chairmen um, on this channel before and I always love um, the time that they give me so a huge thank you to everyone who's ever come on I was hoping today that I could film um, oh, get some interviews from Queen's Park on um, Lesser Hamden Owen Coyle's their manager it would have been great to get him on but I do completely understand from Queen's Park perspective Park's perspective on why I wasn't able to go today. I was pretty last minute for me. I asked them the day before the game, so I totally respect it. I totally understand. But Queen's Park, I'm going to have to come back and cover the story about maybe Lesser Hamden. That's something I would have liked to have asked one or two people about anyway. But yeah, with um, with these three videos, that's like three days worth of sort of filming that um, was sort of wasted for me. And it's so crucial that I really do try to upload as much as I can. Um, I try and upload a video in my mind. I want to upload one every day it's so hard when you're basically the only person working on the channel and stuff but um yeah it is i didn't want to waste this day i didn't want to waste this video so i know that eventually um, when enough things go wrong i will eventually have more of these videos where i upload sort of behind the scenes stuff of things that have gone wrong sorry it wasn't like the normal vlog but the other one went down fairly well so i hope you guys enjoyed this one too please do remember to hit that like button subscribe if you know i've got a game saturday and sunday this weekend hopefully they go a little bit better thank you so much for watching and goodbye